Okay, so the first thing uh, that we're going to go over today is the, uh, the assignment. I know you guys haven't turned in your first assignment yet, but remember this class is a little bit different than uh, 135 if you took 135 because there's a lot of time in between the assignments. There's fewer of them uh, and more time. So on this particular uh, assignment, it takes a while. You definitely right now do not have the skills to do this. So we're going to build through it. And I think one of the things that I found on this particular assignment is it's easier if what you're working on in the exercises matches up with what you're ultimately doing for the assignment. So you have lots of back and forth uh, over the next three or four class, class days, the next two weeks, kind of creating this and, and getting used to it. Uh, essentially, what's important to understand in, in the world of Rhino is we do all this work. We build these, uh, these extensive 3D models. And sometimes you actually have to get physical stuff out of them. And so in this class, I'm trying to emphasize getting physical product out as well as getting nice quality renderings and as well as getting line drawings. So it's kind of the whole, the whole package, so to speak. Um, in this particular section, we're going to build a complex surface. That complex surface is a piece of topography. And one of the fun things about this is all the topography is different. So everybody picks their own, and you get your own piece of topography to build. Uh, some of them are harder than others, obviously. If they get really, really steep, they're really, really hard to do. So you know, something like this is nice, kind of in the, in the happy medium, nice and challenging. The ones that I passed around are obviously good as well. Um, that's about what you're looking for. If you, ha if you pick Yosemite and you're trying to do half dome or something, it, it's too much. It's too steep, but you're doing a cliff, it's not going to work out. So we need something reasonable as part of it. Um, this is something where you will actually have to buy some physical modeling supplies to, to make this. Luckily, it's not that expensive. We use the cardboard that's available at the bookstore. I think it's like $3 or $4 a sheet. You'll probably need two sheets. That's not too bad in my book. Uh, you probably will need some glue. You'll probably need a little exacto knife, but chances are you have those things from some other studio class anyway, so it's not that bad. Or at least you have a friend who has them that you can borrow, etc. Um, I will obviously walk you through the computer side of how we create this file and get it ready to laser cut. When it comes to actually cutting, my hope is that most of you have already laser cut something in this class or you know at school anyway. If you have not, that's okay. There are technicians who, will, who work the lab who will help you laser cut your file. So you'll do that. I used to, way back when, instruct on the laser cutter and how to, how to cut. I'm not going to do that because the lab technicians are there. They can help you do it. That is scheduled and on your own time. So it won't happen actually in class. You should have the file ready to cut um, on Wednesday, October 4th. So that's when your digital file is due. So you'll actually turn in to me on the website a AutoCAD file that is this, that you're going to go cut. The reason that I ask for that is because you're committing to, this is what I'm going to cut. I'm ready to go cut. And then I give you two weeks to go cut it. And actually, I think it's two weeks. Yeah, the final one's due on the October 16th. So it's a week and a half to actually go cut it, make your appointment, glue it together, et cetera. In this process, I will actually go cut one. I'll bring over all the pieces, and I'll show you how to glue it together. So I'm not just going to leave you out, and you have to figure out how to glue it together. There are, believe it or not, techniques for how you build this and make it really clean and make it easy on yourself. So I will show you those techniques as well. Um, the hope is that you'll learn a lot from having to kind of work in Rhino, create some laser cut files, figure out how to assemble them, and that will make you better long term. I can tell you right now that I, I, you know, I keep in touch with students who've moved on. And I've had a number of students say, if I took nothing else away from taking Rhino, just knowing how to do this saved my life when I moved on. Because you will be asked to make topography throughout your architectural career. Like It's just like a given. You just have to be able to do it. And if you get good at this method, it's cheap because it's not very many sheets of, of stock to, come to, to begin with. And you can make it in cardboard. You can make it in wood. You can make it four feet by four feet. You can make it really small. So it's really flexible in how you do it. And obviously, you can use things like a CAD CAM router or a laser cutter to cut the pieces out, and it becomes really easy. So it's worth investing the time now, because it'll save you a little bit later on. So in, we're going to do this as part of this assignment. When we get to the next assignment, we're going to try to do the 3D printers. And uh, like I said, that's experimental for you guys. I've never done it before as part of this class. Um, apparently, we're going to have the, 
the reps come in and, and actually talk to you guys about how to print and give you instruction on it. Uh, so it's, it's, it's in the works. I don't have enough details to really tell you how that's going to work just yet, but somehow it'll work. Uh, and somehow I'll know how to instruct you on how to do it, <laughs> which I currently don't, but we'll figure it out. Um, so there's a couple of these floating around that, that you, can, you can look at. This one's great, except for the seam on this side. That bugs me, so I just want to you know, throw that out there that that, bo that bothers me, okay? But um, the, the complexity and the way that the top is put together is really nice. So I put those out there so you guys can see where you were going with, with all of this stuff. Um, so anyway, that's kind of assignment 202 in a nutshell. The key days are um, digital file due October 4th. That is a Wednesday, and your physical model is due on October 16th, which is a Monday. I will not take them early. I'll take them all at once, and I will grade them that day and give them back to you, because I don't want to have 30-something of these models in my office. It doesn't work. So it's a really kind of quick uh, thing. You will be graded on how well you do in constructing it. It will be graded on how, how nicely the edges match up and are glued together. So things like that seam, that would get graded down. Um, the, the ones, not this one, but those other two, I believe those both got A's. So you can kind of see the spectrum of, of things. Um, you are going to make it, it says on there it should uh, be 8.5 by 11. We're actually going to make it 11 by 17. We're going to make it this size. It's, it's easier to do it at this size. It's a little bit bigger. So we're gonna, it's all going to be 11 by 17. So that's the size I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, like I said, we're going to walk through it. Um, so. Don't panic just yet, because you obviously don't have the skills for it. So we're going to move into today, exercise 211. By the way, don't forget that you have your table and chair due next week. So you should be working on that. You should feel good about it. You should be doing texture mapping. I've seen some of them floating around, and they look pretty good so far, so I'm happy. Remember to reread the assignment and make sure you give me all of the requirements, like the fact that there's three renderings, not one. So make sure you do all three renderings. I don't want you to lose points because you didn't read and give me exactly what I asked for. Does that make sense? I'm just trying to remind you of those things. OK, so in terms of exercise 211 and kind of the next three or four days of class, we're moving away from the kinds of things that we've been doing into working with a complex surface. And by complex surface, I mean that obviously it's not a rectangle anymore. But it also moves, it's also two-dimensional. It curves in two directions. And so we have to figure out how to work with that and, and how to manipulate it and how to, how to make it better or worse, et cetera. So um, we're going to work with topography as our kind of source subject or, or our source material. And we're, for lack of a better way of getting the topography itself, we're going to get it from SketchUp. And SketchUp has built-in geographic data, geolocation data, and SketchUp Pro has uh, topography data built into it. So we're going to get it from that. It is very important, though, to note that as of April of this year, uh, SketchUp, the, the normal version, the non-pro version, cut this feature out. So if you get the free non-pro version, you can't do this anymore. You have to have the pro version to be able to get the terrain information. So for all of you guys, it's not a problem because you have it on these school computers. You can get it from the school computers. It's no, no big deal because we have SketchUp Pro on the school computers. The other alternative to this would be to digitize a topographic survey. So let's say you were, you were working on a rural site for your 220 project or whatever. I think he cut out the rural site this year, so you guys aren't doing that. But let's say you were you would be given an AutoCAD file or some similar file that has the topo lines on it. You could build what I'm building from those topo lines instead of getting it from SketchUp. But we're going to get it from SketchUp because it gives us a lot more flexibility. You can pick where you want to pick uh, as part of it. So I went ahead and I opened up SketchUp 2017. Most of you have probably opened SketchUp before, so all of this is, is very easy for you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick the architectural design feet and inches template. I'm picking the architectural design feet and inches template because it matches up with the units that I'm working in Rhino long term. So I'm making sure that these match before I bring things in. So it's under the template section if you haven't seen that before. And I'm picking architectural design feet and inches. And I'll click the big button to start using SketchUp. And we'll give SketchUp time to load. There's virtually nothing that I really have to do inside of SketchUp. I'm not going to model anything in SketchUp. 
All I'm going to do is bring in the terrain and then export it. So it's pretty easy. I will, once it loads up and we get rid of our load errors, I don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the little dude that, that hangs out there. I'm clicking on him and pressing the delete key. He's just baggage. We don't need him. And then I'll go to the file menu, and I'm going to go down to a menu item called geolocation. And I'm going to click on add location. And when I click on add location, it gives me this information, this add location little window, and lets me pick terrain from somewhere. OK? And so for example, maybe I'll pick something from Mount Diablo. I could also very easily pick Hawaii. I could pick I mean, you, whatever, whatever sounds good to you. We're looking for some hills, though. Obviously, if you do you know, something in the Central Valley, you, know, you go to Yuba City, and it's all flat, like, or Chico, and it's all flat. Like, that's not what I'm looking for. You know, pick something that's, that's good. So uh, let's say I'm working on Mount Diablo. I'll zoom into Mount Diablo a little bit so we can kind of get a sense of Mount Diablo here. And when you zoom in far enough, you'll notice that suddenly I get this little box. That's the maximum that SketchUp will allow me to export. So I have to be closer than that. If I zoom in a little bit further, the box gets bigger. Zoom in a little bit further, the box actually goes away, which would allow me to select the whole, the whole screen. When I have zoomed in to the amount that I want, let's pick maybe that, I can click on the Select Region button. And when I do that, it gives me these little uh, corner points that I can then choose how much I want. I told you that it was limited by, oh, come on. My mouse is sticking a little bit. It was limited by that square that showed up, so that's the maximum amount I can get right now. When I'm done, I'll go ahead and click on Grab. And SketchUp will go get the, the topographic data and bring it in. And we give it a little bit of time. Looks like some of you, it, it came in much faster than me. I don't know why it's taking so long for me. But. Yep, any location you want. Any location. Stay away from you know, things that are too steep, like Half Dome. And um, you know, don't do anything that's too flat. So we're looking for that happy medium, something with some hills in it. Uh, I can confirm that this looks the way I want by going to File, Geolocation, Show Terrain. And that'll give me what the terrain looks like. OK? So that's reasonable. I'll go to File, Geo Geolocation, and then check the box for Show Terrain. And it's going to show me what the terrain looks like. That's good confirmation. OK, that's an acceptable terrain. You can pick a different terrain. That, that works for me. So when I'm done here, I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Save As. And I need to save it onto my flash drive. So let me go into today's folder here. And I'll call this Mount Diablo. OK, now it's really important under Save As Type, SketchUp updates far more frequently than the Rhino versions do. So we're going to go back a ways. And we're going to pick SketchUp 2013 as our file. Chances are 2015 probably works. I know for sure that 2013 works. So I'm just going to go back to that. So I'll go to SketchUp version 2013. And I'll go ahead and save my file. Nothing changes. It's nothing particularly fancy. It just has to do with SketchUp coming out with new versions frequently. right? We've been in Rhino 5 forever. Um, and the other thing that happens is they don't update the computers all the time. So we might have an older version. So it makes us a little bit sa it's safe. So I saved it as a SketchUp 2013. And that's all I need to do in SketchUp. Pretty easy. Now we'll go ahead and open up Rhino. Give Rhino a second to load up here. And as is the case, I'm going to pick the large object inches template to make sure that I'm in inches as my default unit. There we go. I have this. I'll confirm that inches are my default unit. The reason I'm being very specific about units 
is because SketchUp works in inches, and when I bring this file in, if I'm not in the same units, it's going to be not the right size. So I have to make sure that all comes in and it's consistent. So I'm overemphasizing that today. Once I have that, I'll go to File and then Import. And I need to go find that SketchUp file, which I saved into today's folder. There's Mount Diablo. And I'll click Open. If you don't see the SketchUp file, you might have a specific file selected, a file type selected from this drop down me menu. Uh, I like to keep it at all compatible file types if I can so that I can see everything. I'm looking for the Mount Diablo terrain file here. And I'll go ahead and click on Open. I get the SketchUp import options. How do you want this file to come in? So this is the first time that we see the fundamental difference between a SketchUp file and a Rhino file. And if you work in these programs, you'll start to get used to the differences. But essentially, SketchUp files are triangulated meshes. And if you've ever made a curving object in SketchUp, the more you zoom in, the more you realize it has facets. It's not perfectly smooth. In Rhino, we're mathematically defining a curving surface. Therefore, it's perfectly smooth. And the more you zoom in, the smoother it is. So when we bring in a SketchUp file, it's going to bring in what's called a triangulated mesh of flat faces. So it's going to be made up of a bunch of little triangles. That's the nature of it. And so when it comes in, we have some options. We do want it to come in as a mesh. And we do want to join together the edges and faces so that they, they actually weld together and become one surface. We don't want a bunch of individual triangles. It's way too hard to deal with. So we'll go ahead and leave the default options. I'll say OK. And we'll let that file come in. So if I zoom out a little bit, we can see the file that came in. It looks roughly like the SketchUp file. There's two things that, that come in with the SketchUp file. There's the flat and there's the terrain. The flat version is the object that goes away when you say view, show terrain in SketchUp. SketchUp actually has two objects, technically, in two different states. When we bring it in, we get the two objects. We can del safely delete the flat version because we don't need it. It doesn't matter. And that leaves us with the triangulated mesh. So as I look at this mesh, especially if I look at one of the edges here, you can really see that it's made up of those little triangular facets. Okay? It's definitely not a smooth surface at all. So once I bring this file in, I want to start thinking about it becoming a surface, a NURB surface, a Rhino surface, that I can choose how much smoothing I want to apply to it. So let's, let's organize this file just a little bit before we move on. First thing, let's make a, a, a layer called SketchUp. I just picked layer 7 and, and renamed it to be SketchUp. And then I'm going to take the, the stuff that was brought in, the Google Earth Terrain, Layer 0, and the Google Earth Snapshot. And I'll take all three of those and drop them underneath the SketchUp layer, thereby giving me one layer that controls all of the SketchUp stuff. We'll go ahead and rename the default layer here. And I'm going to rename that one to be Contour X. And I'm going to rename layer 2 to be contour y. And I'll get rid of layer 3 and layer 6. I'll press the delete key. So all I have now is contour x, contour y, and the file that represents SketchUp, all the layers that represent SketchUp. So at this point, I need to convert this object into an actual NURBS surface. And there's a couple different ways that I can do this. One uh, is called NURBS to me or Mesh to NURBS, which is essentially I take the object and I type Mesh to NURBS, Mesh to NURB, and I hit Enter. And it tries to convert the shape that I had. So there's my terrain. There's my new mesh surface. Now, in this, in this instance, it took all the individual triangles and made them rhino surfaces. OK, that's nice, but it's still triangulated. It's not smooth. It's not what I want. So I don't particularly like that option. And instead, we're going to use the network surface. Remember, we used that when we were doing our cushions. We're going to do the same thing here, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to use a command called contour to Sorry, I'm just double checking. By the way, in the, in the handout here, 
it references some longer-winded tutorials, Rhino 5.23 and 5.24. So if you want to go back and review all the steps that I'm doing, it actually spreads it out into the individual steps. So you can see that if you want to. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create contours that run across the surface in two directions. One's going to go in the x direction, and one's going to go in the y direction. So let me, let me illustrate this for you. I'm going to go to Curve, Curve from Objects, Contour, or I could just type Contour. And it's going to say, Select Objects for Contours. So the mesh is the object that I want to contour. I'll go ahead and press Enter. It says, Contour Plane Base Point. So I'm going to pick one of these corners. Notice, though, that I am not snapping to anything on the corner. I need to actually turn on a snap called Vertex, which will allow me to snap to the corner of this mesh. So I've, double, I've, I've checked the box for vertex on my persistent OSnap dialog box down here. And that will allow me to select this lower corner. So I'll click that. The next thing is it says direction perpendicular to the contour planes. And essentially, in this direction, I'm going to, because I'm on the contour x layer, I'm going to go off into space along the x axis out this way. Now, when I go off into space along the x-axis, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally you know, set some other point and, and have this off axis. So it really needs to be out here in space. I also have ortho turned on so that it's snapping to the axis itself. So I leave ortho on, and there it is out there, not snapping to anything, and I'll specify that direction. The next thing is it says distance between contours. So this is how frequently I want these contours. My guess is you're going to do somewhere between 50 feet and 100 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and say 100 feet. Remember, I put the little apostrophe there. Don't put 100, because that would mean 100 inches, which means it's going to be really close together and probably crash the computer. So we don't want that. So 100 feet, and I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And it will then slice up this model into a bunch of parallel lines. You guys see how it did that? And it went fairly fast. This is about right, the 100 foot level. I could probably do it a little bit less. I could probably do 200 feet given the size of the triangles. I only have so much accuracy in the original surface, so I could probably do it a little bit less, maybe 200 feet. Now I need to repeat the contour, but this time I want it to be on contour Y. So I'm going to double click to be on contour Y, and this is really important. There will be at least a handful of you that will not do this part. Okay. I'm clicking off so that nothing is selected before I start the next contour. And I'll show you what happens if I didn't do that. Okay? So let me go back and let me contour it again for practice. Contour, select objects for contours. There it is. We'll go off in this direction. There's my lines. So there'll be a handful of you that will do a contour again. Great. Let me just do contour. Let me switch layers. We'll be that good. But yeah, OK, contour, great. Base point, OK, sounds good. We're going to go off in the y direction. That's awesome. Distance between 100 feet, perfect. You end up with all these little dots. Okay. When you, contour, when you contour a surface, you get a line. When you contour a line, you get a point. So I got a bunch of points, not a bunch of lines. I want a bunch of lines. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And it takes a little while because it's a lot of points. And I'm going to make sure nothing's selected, and I'm going to go back to the contour command. So I'm either going to type contour or go to curve, curve from objects, and then contour. Select objects for contours. I need to go back and click that surface again, that, that SketchUp surface. There we go. I'll hit Enter. Base point will be this corner. This time, it's the contour is in the Y direction, so I'll go off in the Y direction. Same distance between at 100 feet. Enter, and I end up with curves going in that direction. So at this point, if I were to turn off the SketchUp file, you would see that I have a bunch of curves that are essentially a wireframe guide for what the surface needs to look like. So at this point, I can start to move into that network surface, or the curve network, to create the nice complex surface that comes in here. Unfortunately, it won't quite work because I have a few of these little ragged edges out here. I need to be completely contained, not have open ends. So I'm going to switch into the top view, and I'm going to do a little trimming. 
And it doesn't matter, I have plenty of, of terrain here. So we'll go ahead and select curves that are in there a little bit. Pick those curves. I'm going to go ahead and type trim. And then I'm going to trim off the curves that are all outside of these curves. It's very easy to do the right side and across the top. It's much harder to do the left side and across the bottom. Like that. There we go. I'll hit enter to finish. And now I have a nicely contained grid that's contained within a border. And if I were to look at this in the perspective view, we can look all the way around. There's no ragged edges. That looks quite nice. So now it's time to do the network surface and actually create the, the, the final surface. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And we'll call this layer terrain. I'll make it my active layer. And I'm ready to do the network surface. Sometimes Rhino crashes during this process, depending on the complexity of how many curves there are. So it's a great time to go ahead and save your work. So before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'll go to File and then Save. We'll go into today's folder. And this is and I'll save. And just in case something goes wrong, I'll save it. Perfect. So I have terrain as my active layer. I'm ready to do the network surface. So I'll select my curves, all of them. I'll go into uh, surface and I'll do curve network, or I can type in the command network surface, network SRF. And it pops up this dialog saying, calculating a surface for more than 100 curves can be slow and may cause Rhino to become unstable. Remember I warned you of this? Okay. Chances are it's going to be fine. Are you sure you want to do it? Yes. We'll give it a shot. OK, so it sorted the curves. I got my A, B, C, and D, just the way that I, I got it on the cushion. But remember, with the cushion, I had, what, four curves, maybe five curves, maybe a really fancy cushion with six curves. Here, I have 127 curves, so it's a lot more. So we'll go ahead and leave these default options just fine, and I'll say OK. And we'll let Rhino work for a little bit. This process can take a while. The other thing that happens is once your surface actually shows up, Rhino is going to be extremely slow until we rebuild the surface. So I'll show you how to do that once we get there. Back before we had this computer lab, we used to be in 124, and we would do this process, and it would be like, OK, go get coffee for a while. Right? The good news is now it only takes us maybe uh, three or four minutes, so it's not too bad. So it just finished creating that surface for me. If I were to click off so that nothing's selected, and I were to try to move this around, you're going to see that it, it really jumps. It's very jumpy at that point. It's because of the density of this surface. It's a very complex surface. If I select the surface, it's going to turn bright yellow, which is different than the border of yellow with the little cross in it. And if I were to zoom in on this surface, and this is a very slow process, we'd see that, yes, this surface is, in fact, made up of lots of little crossing grid lines. Okay? It's just really complicated. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and type rebuild, or go up to, I think it's edit rebuild. And I'm going to rebuild the surface. And let's rebuild it at maybe 500 by 500 in the UNV values. So we'll go 500 by 500. We're going to end up making that number go down. But we'll start with 500 by 500. I'll say OK. And it gets less complex. And suddenly, I can move a little bit easier. So now I have this surface that's 500 by 500. Let me turn off my contour x and contour y so we have just the surface there. I'm currently looking at this in shaded mode so that I can see the surface. But you can see that there's all these leftovers of the triangles. See how there are little peaks along there? That's because of the original SketchUp surface. So if I turn on the original SketchUp surface, we can see as the two overlap that, yep, there's that flat plane. And Rhino's tried to smooth it out a little bit. In the process of what we did, smoothed it out a little bit. 
But the more times we re rebuild it, and the, um, the smaller the U and V values are, the smoother this surface is going to get. So I'm going to do several options right here to show you the differences between them. So let me turn off SketchUp for just a second. I'm going to create a couple layers. You don't have to do this. This is for illustration purposes. I'm going to go ahead and create a Terrain 2. Actually, let's call it a Terrain 100, a Terrain 50, and a Terrain 10. And this one here was actually a Terrain 500. So let me go ahead and copy this in place. I'll change object layer there. Copy, in place, change object layer, copy, in place, and I'll change object layer. Essentially, that just gives me the same surface on multiple layers. So this first one was my Terrain 500. Let's turn on my Terrain 100. We'll turn off the 500, turn off the 10. And I'm going to rebuild this surface. Instead of 500, we'll go to 100 by 100. Oops. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And you can see that I get much fewer lines. And if I were looking right at this ridge, Remember I used to have some little triangles that were poking out along that ridge? It's definitely getting smoother by just going to 100 by 100. I can choose to layer and turn on the 500 so you can see what's changed. There's the little peaks that I was talking about. If I turn those off, OK, that's a little bit smoother now. If I turn back on 50 and I rebuild this one by 50, 50 and 50, and I say OK, the surface is suddenly getting much smoother. And if we turned it on in comparison to the 500, you can see you know, where it's smoothed out a lot more. So I'm doing this to kind of illustrate. At some point, though, you sacrifice a little too much smoothing for accuracy. So if I take this last one and I say rebuild at 10 by 10. And I say OK. OK, well, it's, it's really smooth now. But if we compare it to our original SketchUp file, there's pretty big areas that are not accurate anymore. Now, of course, this is assuming that SketchUp is accurate to begin with, which it's not. But for the purposes of what we're doing, we're trying to find a happy medium. So in, in my world, I would say a 10 by 10 really isn't that reasonable. If we did a 50, Okay, it's a lot closer, and sometimes the easiest way of seeing it is when you overlay it. Probably not the best. I think probably 100 by 100 is probably the best uh, kind of happy medium. So it's got a, a fair amount of the accuracy that we want, but it's smoothed out those ridges, so there's not really any major triangles on it. So 100 by 100 seems like a pretty good happy medium for what we're trying to do today. So I have this set up. It's on my Terrain 100 layer. We could rename that just Terrain. It doesn't need to be Terrain 100. I was just showing you the contrast between those. At this point, we're going to do a couple more things before I turn you loose. The first one is that we're going to use the Contour command to cut topo lines out of this. And you can see kind of where this is going long term. And by the way, the things that I do today, I will do the whole th process again next lecture. So you'll see me do this three or four times as we go forward. So I'm always going to build on what we do. I'm not going to just throw, oh, just do what we did last class, and then this here's all the new stuff. I'm going to actually go through it so you get it several, several times. So, But of course, I'll go faster than I am today. So what I want to do is I want to cut this up as if it were like an actual topo map. So instead of cutting my contours in the x direction or cutting my contours in the y direction, this time I'm going to cut them in the z direction, which is what we typically, typically see as topo lines. So I'll go ahead and create a new layer. And I could call this contour z, but I could also call it topo lines. I'll make that active. And I'm going to cut the contours of this. So I'll go in and I'll go to Edit, 
or excuse me, curve, curve, curve from objects, contour once again. Select objects for contours, it's going to be that NURB surface. I'll hit enter. This time, contour base point is going to be right there at the corner, same thing. But I'm not going in the x direction, and I'm not going in the y direction. I have to go straight up. And chances are I'm going to have to look at one of the other views to get it to go straight up. So I'll, I'll use the front view here, and I'll make sure I'm going straight up. So now I'm going in the z direction. Then I need to save my distance between my contours. And so this is going to vary based on your particular site. If I did one foot, we'd have an awful lot of them. If I did 100 feet, we probably wouldn't have enough of them. So it's some happy medium. I'm going to do 10 feet and see what happens. Let me make the perspective view big here really quick. And then I'll type 10 feet. And you'll actually be able to watch the contours creating as they go up over my terrain. Uh, it, it's more complicated than that. We'll get there. This, this interval is not what I would pick if I was making the, the physical model. But you guys see kind of the skill set that I'm building right now. So now I have all of those nice little topo lines. And if I were to turn off the surface and I were to look at this in the top view, uh, guess what? It's like kind of like a topo map. Okay? The only challenge, and actually you can see a few of the little artifacts if I zoom out far enough. See the squares that are still left? Right, that was from the original. There's little bits that are still a little square. So anyway, I have those set up. I'm relatively happy with that. But they're still three-dimensional. They're still like this. So let's take it a step further and make it flat. So let me create a new layer. And we'll call this one topo flat. I'll double click to make that the active layer. There it is. And I'm going to create a very large surface below my terrain, something like that. Actually, it cuts right through the terrain, which is fine. Now, I'll select all of those lines that are my topo lines. So let me select the objects there. And I'm going to use that project command. Remember, we did project. But I have to do the project in the top view. So we'll make sure I'm in the top view. And I'll go to uh, curve, curve from objects, project. Select surfaces of poly surfaces to project onto. There's my surface. I'll hit Enter. And give it a little bit of time. And now, if I were to turn off the topo lines layer, we can delete that plane. I would end up with a flat set of topo lines that represent my particular hill, mountain, whatever. At this point, I can take these lines, and I can export them to AutoCAD, which is what we'll use to do the cutting. So I'll go to File, Export Selected. I'll change from a Rhino file to an AutoCAD file. And I'll drop it into today's folder. And I'll click Save. 2004 polylines, that's the default. That's fine. I'll say OK. And that's essentially an AutoCAD file that I could then go make some manipulations and cut. There are a lot more steps to actually creating a, a ready to laser cut AutoCAD file for something like this. That's more than you need to worry about for today. Today, we're talking about this kind of the global process. We'll get into the details of it as we go forward and as I practice with you over the next several lectures. Okay? So my goal today is for you to ultimately get, get an AutoCAD file out. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if it, it, you know, it doesn't need to have red and blue engraved and cut lines or anything like that. We're just trying to get to the point where I was able to, OK, I understand what the contour command does. I understand how to make a NURB surface from the mesh that came in from SketchUp. And I understand how to do a projection and then ultimately export these lines into AutoCAD. Those are the skills I'm working on today. We'll take this much further as we go forward in class. If you end up with extra time, I suggest maybe uh, designing and making a uh, like a little meditation pavilion or something like that. Though the truth is, you probably need time to work on your chair and table anyway. So 
I might amend that to say work on your table and chair. Okay? Your post today will be the AutoCAD file. Um, you probably need a featured image, though, to, to create it. So perhaps for the featured image, when you have your, um, your topo lines set up, maybe something like this, do a screen capture of it. So go to the little triangle here, go to Capture to File, and save a JPEG of those lines. That way you have something as the featured image that proves that you did it. Something like that, OK? So I know it's a lot to take in. I know it's a lot of steps. Remember, it is written out. If you go to the, the digital tool site, if you go to Tutorials and you go to Rhino 5.23 and 5.24, those are the two that you'll be using. Here it is. Walks you through how to do the various things that I, was, I basically did. It's all there for you if you feel like you need it um, with references and that sort of thing. Um, so give that a go. See how, it, see how it plays out. We will begin working again next class. If you find that you don't like your terrain, you don't like your mountain, stick with it for today. But we'll go back and change it before your actual assignment. So this is like the pri practice trial run. We'll go back and fix it. A lot of the things that we do today aren't the final version anyway, because we have to specify what the contour intervals are. And it's a little bit different when we make the, the laser cut file. But you'll get a chance to change it if you want. So don't feel like you're stuck.